How's it going everyone? Titanhawk here and today I'm going to show you how to get the event standings in a start GG event using their API. So let's get right into it. Alrighty, so we're here in VS Code. Now if you recognize this, it's the same file that we did in the first tutorial where I showed you how to access the API and set up your API token. Now you'll notice it looks a little bit different, a lot less code here and that is because I have moved everything to another file, get event ID.js now contains all of the uh, the file structure to get the event ID with a tournament name and an event name. One thing you'll notice here is this is using module.exports to go ahead and export the function. We went ahead and named the export get event ID and set a function like so. This is that way because then inside here for index.js, I can require dot slash get event id label that as event id and set this as event id dot get event id that way when i run the code you'll see that is able to successfully return the same thing that we saw in the last video so in this one we're going to set up get event or get event results dot js to give us the event results or the event standings. So to start here in get event results.js, there are a couple things we're going to need here at the top of the file. These are gonna be the same things that we see here in get event ID.js. We're going to need those exact same things, our .env to get the token, the or the API key rather, the fetch function, the start gg URL, and our start gg key. Now there is one more, and that is going to be const sleep equals require dot slash sleep. Now this is because the API for start GG, and this is pretty common with a lot of APIs as well. They have this feature implementing called rate limits, meaning you can only obtain so many objects or so much data or make so many requests within a set period of time before the API will just reject those requests. This is more on the security side of things. And if you would like to learn more about that, I highly recommend researching that in your own time. Now we are ready to begin writing our function. So first things first, similar to get event ID.js, we want to do module exports and then curly braces. That way when we export this file and we want to import into another one, we can simply then call on the get event results function that we're going to create. So just write get event results, do a colon, do a function, and then do event ID, and then another set of curly braces. Now there is one thing I have yet to add in here, and that is going to be this async keyword here. I'll explain what this is later on, and you'll see why we're, why we need it, as this is how we're gonna make sure we get uh, we give our code time to get data from the API as we're going to use the await keyword. Await and async normally go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. And then we're going to use that to make sure, again, we get all of our data from the API. That way we simply don't have an undefined set of data when we run through the end of the function. But more on that later. Up next is going to be defining some constant uh, variables or not so, much not so much constant variables, but variables that we're going to need throughout the code. First is going to be the number of teams or the number of entrants. We'll call it entrants to match the vocabulary that they are using in the StartGG API. We're not gonna assign this to anything yet, but the next thing we're going to then have is let num entrants found. Now, this is going to be how many entrants have we found final placements for. We're going to use num entrance as more of our loop variable to make sure that we're not going beyond that and the number of entrants found to see as our to be more of our iterator variable. And lastly, we're going to need a page number variable and we know that is going to start at 1. This is how we're going to go through the API with all the data. That way we can get all of our data without hitting the rate limit. We are now ready to begin adding in our first fetch request to the API where we're going to look to get the number of entrants. So you'll notice here, this queries.txt file that I have saved on my machine in this folder. This is a file with all of the repetitive code that we're going to be using and some of the queries that we will be using throughout this tutorial series. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to copy this fetch 
here and I'm going to go ahead and place it in here. But before I do that, I'm going to add the await keyword in front and then put fetch there. Now this is because we want to make sure we give the API and the code time to communicate with each other. That way we can get all of the information and the data that we need. So we're gonna use this first query here to make sure we go ahead and get the total number of entrants. Now, I already have the full query string saved here, but I'll walk you through it as soon as I go ahead and paste it over into our code. So how we get the total number of entrants in this in an event is we go ahead and say query event entrance, we pass in the ID with a page number we, are, we want and how many, uh, how much information we want per page. We then add then the event. Then we say, hey, the event ID is this. We then, it then can go ahead and give us the entrance, which then we are mainly just using, that way we can get page info and we can find out the total number of entrants in this event. So the only, I, the only variables we need to pass into this are going to be the event ID variable, which is event ID. And we want then to pass in uh, page. We make sure we do this in order. We do page which will be one and then per page, which will also be one. This is because it does not matter what page we are on in the API in our data, because we only are looking for one variable that we can get at the very beginning of our first request. So then here inside of our dot then with date, our data function, we can go ahead and say number of entrants equal to data dot data dot event dot entrance dot page info dot total we can go ahead and check the path so data is our variable that holds all of the data the data is the first object we then check event then entrance then page info and then total which is the value we are looking for so this looks good now the next thing I'm going to do is introduce you the sleep function now again to make sure we don't hit any rate limit errors when we are accessing our data, we want to make sure we have the code go ahead and sleep for one second. Now this code can then also be used to have it sleep for however long we need it to, but I found that with the StartGG API, we only need to have it sleep for one second and then we are good to continue. So we simply call sleep.sleep .sleep, and we pass in 1000 for 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second. And now we are ready to begin writing our while loop. So our while loop is going to be very straightforward. It's going to be while the number of entrants found is less than the number of entrants, we want to make sure we keep doing this while loop. Now, the number of entrants found is going to be however many entrants we have found so far and compare that against the number of entrants. We want to make sure we do not go over, otherwise we're going to run into undefined errors and that's gonna cause our code to crash. Now, the next thing we can do is go ahead, go back here into our queries.txt file. We're going to make another fetch request. And again, remember to add the await keyword in front of it. And then now here, the query we're going to use is query event standing. This is how StartGG stores in their backend all of the data associated to the placements for entrance in their events. So you can see here, it's event standings. We pass in the same three as before, the event ID, the page, and the per page. Then our objects are going to be the event with the ID being the event ID we passed in. Then we look for the standings, and then we want our nodes, which is, indicates here, again, a list, if you remember that from the first video. This is going to be a list of, uh, of nodes of the placement, the entrant, and then the name of the entrant. So this looks pretty good for what we want to do so far. Now we just need to make sure we pass in our variables, which is going to be event ID as our event ID. Then we want our page to be our page number variable. And then per page, I have found that f getting 50 nodes at a single time is a reasonable number to make sure we are moving quick along through the code and through the data without having to hit a rate limit. Now page number, we're going to be making sure we increment that throughout the while loop to make sure we are always constantly moving forward with the data we receive. So with that being said, 
looks like we are ready to go ahead and start handling our data. Now, there is a edge case here that we want to make sure we take into account. It's saying, say the number of entrants found is 50 and the number of entrants is 75. We're looking to read 50 more entrants, which will put us at 100, but we know 25 of those won't exist. Well, we can handle that. So we'll say let loop condition, and you'll see why I called this loop condition in a second. We're gonna call that 50. And then we're going to say if the number of entrants found plus the loop condition is greater than the number of, te or number of entrants, we then want to say the loop condition is the number of entrants minus the number of entrants found that way we do not go out of bounds. Perfect, so this looks good. Now the reason I call this a loop condition is because we're going to use a for loop to go through our data. And we're going to use a loop condition as, well, our condition. And now that we have that set up here, what we're going to do is we just want to go ahead and output it to the console what each team placed. So we can go ahead and say console.log and then we'll do double backtick here to make sure we are able to use variables or data directly from the data uh, that we receive instead of having to store it in a variable. So we can do dollar sign curly brace and then do data dot data dot event dot standings dot nodes I because remember nodes is a list dot entrant dot name. This, as you can guess, is going to give us the name of the entrant. So with the Collegiate Rocket League example that we're going to use in this tutorial, we this should be the name of the school that is competing. It could be something like University of Minnesota Gold or University of Minnesota. There could be a color associated with it to represent the different uh, level that the team is playing at. If that's the varsity team, the JV team, the third team, so on and so forth. But we can go ahead and check to make sure this is the correct path. So data, again, is our initial variable. Data will be the first object. We then want the event, which we can check here. Our standings, which checks out here. Our nodes, I, which again, nodes is a list. And then entrant, and then name. And yep, that looks good to me. And now you can probably already guess, with placement, it's going to be a very similar path. So we can go ahead and copy all the way up to nodes. And then here we'll say this entrant placed dollar sign curly brace, paste this, and instead here, we're gonna say placement. Perfect. So we can go ahead and add a semicolon on the end to that. And then now we're almost done with this with getting all the data that we need. So the next thing I'd like to do is to make sure we had in some error handling. So we can go ahead and add a catch clause here and say error. And then here we can just simply say, just tell us what was the error, just console.log the error. Now, the last thing we need to do before this code is ready to go is down here at the bottom, we need to say, we need to change our loop variables, right? So we say page number, we need to increase that by one because we know we got all the information from the current page. Page number is greater than, or plus equals one. The number of entrants found plus equals 50. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna find 50 every single time, because like I said, the edge case here might trigger at the end of the list. But nonetheless, if the number of entrants found is always going to be, we're always gonna say it's 50 more. Even if we found only 29 teams, that is still okay that we add 50, because if we look back at our loop condition, the number of entrants found is less than the number of entrant. As soon as we find more, as soon as this number is greater and saying that, hey, we found more entrants than the number of entrants that there are in the tournament, then we know not to keep going further in this loop and we have all of our data. And then the last thing, make sure we comply with the rate limit and have the code sleep for one second. So this is it right here. This is all that we will need to do to get all of the event standings in a StartGG event. One thing before we go and test our code, I am noticing I almost forgot to do something that's going to cause an error with our code. Back here at the top, we want to make sure we set num of num entrance found equal to zero. 
That way, when this while loop runs initially, we want to make sure that num entrance found is already set at zero. That way, this will run. The other thing I found too, make sure these last three statements here, page number, num entrance, and sleep are all inside of the while loop. That way, it runs as it should. Now, we're ready to go ahead and head over into index.js. And as you can see, I already added in the code here. So we say const event results equals require dot slash get event results. And then we do event results dot get event results with the ID we found from here. So now we go, can go ahead and run this code and I will see you in just a few seconds when it finishes running. All right, so we are back here with the code. And you can see we have all of the information from this tournament. Now, you can see here that a lot of the teams shared the same placement, and that is perfectly okay. That is how some tournaments are run through Start GG. If you want to add in functionality to say, hey, this Boise State Orange placed 6th through 7th, as did Washington State University, you can implement that code. We can see here then that Borregos MTY placed first, Dragonis Carolina placed second, and Can University of Kansas Blue placed third. And just like that, we have all of the information that we need and we proved that our query was successful. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to hit that like button and let me know down in the comments what other queries you would like to see used through Start GG API. And also please be sure to subscribe that way you don't miss out on another tutorial series and another video in this series on the Start GG API. Until then, my name is Titan Hawk 17, wishing you a good rest of your day wherever you may be.